Hi, I'm Lauren. And I'm Christina. And this is our podcast, Let's, Let's Shoot the, the Fat. Fat. Hello, welcome to the new episode of the Let's Shoot the Fat podcast. Hi. So, today we're going to do a little list of travel hacks that we've accumulated over the past two slash three years of us traveling back and forth in between countries. I mean, maybe... No, it's going to be travel hacks in general, but I guess a couple of them are also specific to like trying to like bring your life back and forth in between countries. So that's going to be the main part, but as always, we're going to look back at this past week, which you had an exciting week, me not so much, so maybe your mom was visiting. Yeah, my mom was here <laughs> yet again, and it was great. I mean, I feel like the first thing we should talk about is Friday which is that I was sitting on the train going to the train station to pick up my mom and all of a, all of a sudden we got this a very exciting emails too actually when no I was just wondering if we need to give more context but you say that then we can give the yeah. backstory and so I got the two emails and all of a sudden my world started falling apart you can continue oh oh wow okay so basically what had happened was well how much do i say everything you should okay yeah okay go ahead we, we don't hold any secrets <laughs> here basically what had happened was that um we had had a lot of like online classes for this one specific class well for two classes that were both held by the same professor because he'd been having personal problems like his dad had to go had to go into surgery and he had to be there for him like just to take care of him afterwards bring him to surgery you know the usual just a being a nice son type of things that you do for your dad but he is that lives in Galicia so he had to spend a lot of time there and he couldn't just travel back and forth in between Galicia and Madrid regularly so he would you know try his best like yes like maybe one class was completely missed but otherwise he would do like online classes and do the theory part and then have us do some exercises like on our own time now a couple of people in our class did not agree with this apparently honestly i don't know <laughs> i'm what trying I... to explain it but i don't I... it the whole like at one point our class started fighting each in other the in the group chat um and i honestly till this day i don't really understand what happened because i missed i mean most there was <laughs> one like beginning point of this where is basically somebody talked to somebody about this and well i can give them like i can give you guys like their reason their reason was that they were scared that we weren't getting the education that we deserve and we were not giving the co the quality of the classes that but we I deserve. I don't believe this. No, that's why I'm saying it's their reason. Then I'm going to yeah. explain why this doesn't like, matter. Like, it's so weird. Um, the, yeah, so they were, they were scared about their education, okay? They were scared that they were going to fail the exam because we weren't doing all of the content, even though the exam is like a multiple choice test done by the professor who knows that we haven't been doing all of the content you know yeah. so he wouldn't put any of the content that we were hadn't been doing in and class we agreed on like specific terms that everybody was fine with exactly um also fun fact about the students that were annoyed about this they never showed up to the online <laughs> classes either so they they couldn't have been that concerned you know but that was their reasoning so that kind of led to this whole fight in the group chat where people were like well come on this guy is having a hard personal time he's doing his best like the quality of the courses that we're getting are good even if they are online like they're some of the best online classes i've ever had to be honest um so that kind of happened then and the like evoking message was one girl saying that she was scared about all of that so she had talked to some other guy who's going to talk to other people to try to find like a solution for us right so the message that we got on Friday was what? The email? Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, well, the email was that this professor is going to be replaced. We will have two new professors, each for the two, two classes, classes we had. Teaching. And the exams are, like, out of the out of the question like they were gonna be quote-unquote canceled uh the date we agreed on we would have a new date or like in the email it said that like the predetermined 
date will stay as it was supposed to. But there's a lot of problems with this because we had agreed on specific dates, terms, earlier everything. Earlier dates. Earlier dates, exactly. And I already booked my flight after all the professors confirmed the dates with me. Mm-hmm. And then I booked my flight. But now there is an issue that like early exams are technically after my departure. And her yeah. flight is before the official Yeah, before dates. Yeah, there's like an official date for these things. But a lot of professors just adjust it a little bit to accommodate the students. Mm-hmm. So like I said, my world started falling apart because like I had my flight booked and we didn't know all of a sudden when the exam is going to be held. Also, we're very close to exams at this point. Yeah. Okay? This is not yeah. the time to change exam Exactly. Dates. We're insanely close. And like to change the professor, basically, I think three or four weeks before the classes are supposed to end. Like it's an insane situation. And so I started panicking because I didn't have time and space um, to just deal with yeah. this. Um, and also, we were going to have a professor for the one class that we didn't particularly love. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, and we had him like for a previous class. And so we were terrified of that too. But hopefully, to just like summarize this all, the situation is weird, strange, stupid. I would have not never better thought. For us. Not better no, for us not than at all. Classes. I would have never thought something like this could happen even the professor that we have now is super confused it's like what am i doing here? and he can't teach it because like he teaches like, it in a teaches completely, it in a different, completely way. different way so the content that we've had up to now doesn't make sense for him so now we're basically just not being taught anything for the remaining like weeks as opposed to having online classes with yeah. content so it makes i mean that's my whole issue no with like society and the rules <laughs> because i mean we're circling back to the last episode (laughs) um but i just i just hate this because i understand that sometimes there have to be rules but oftentimes they don't or they can be bent or like adjusted because like we in the university technically we are the clients you know Mm -hmm. we are the students i know i'm saying technically Mm -hmm. Um, because it's public yeah that's why i'm saying but like we should be the ones they think about you know to have the best experience whatever at least in my opinion and a lot of the times to be honest it doesn't feel like that uh but hopefully now everything will be fine we already know one of the exams is set again and then tomorrow we have the other class with another professor so hopefully that will be resolved as well and we can continue living our stressful lives because the exams are coming closer and closer Mm -hmm. and it's just a very stressful time of the semester yeah we don't need this in addition to it yeah that's enough oh i didn't actually talk about my weekend with my mom (laughs) do you want to quickly because it sounds like you had a great weekend yeah no i had the perfectest Weekend. Oh. I know it's not a word, but I just wanted to do this. No, the weekend was really, really nice because my mom gave it to her sister for her birthday because she's always wanted to visit Barcelona, especially the Sagrada Familia. Like, that was her dream. And she's never been. So my mom gave it to her for her 40th birthday because it's a big birthday. Mm-hmm. And so they went to Barcelona for two days and they came here to Madrid And it was just great. We had such a great time because my aunt is hilarious. And it was interesting to see the dynamic between my mom and her sister. Like, just literally like that. Two sisters without their kids, without their partners. Yeah, and it was so much fun. We kept laughing like at one point. (laughs) my my stomach hurt so much from laughing like it was one specific moment and it was hilarious and the first day we got sushi i mean in general we ate a lot of great food we walked through the city of madrid so much like we did it twice in a day twice in the at night that doesn't surprise me at all to like see certain places and then it kind of just happened 
and we they were only here for well your mom had been here but i mean your aunt had was only yeah. here for two days so that needs to but i mean i feel like the city of madrid honestly you can walk around once during the day once during the night and you're done like yeah for all the touristy places i guess yeah yeah, yeah. but then i mean on sunday we basically spent the majority of the day in the retiro park because there's a lot of stuff rap happening right now and even there was a lot of stuff my mom like that were new to my mom still like mm. the montaña de los gatos oh, or what else i mean kind of like the whole side of that park we haven't really it was random. oh you hadn't explored i mean me yes yeah. but like she hasn't yeah. so like we explored that more we walked through another streets that she hasn't walked through so it was still really interesting to her she said and she had an amazing time perfect here. full days yeah honestly honestly could not have been better yeah. absolutely so i'm really glad they came we had a lot of fun and it was honestly nice that it was like only during the weekend because then for me it didn't feel like a full-on visit i guess it was also because it was short but like when my sister was here she was here for almost a week and then i feel like i have to like create plans you know yeah and i guess it's also always difficult when you have to kind of like work around classes and then yeah you whereas know, this just felt like i had plans on yeah, the weekend yeah just and weekend it was plans. that so it was really nice so that was just a quick Amazing. summary <laughs> Alrighty, let's do this. Uh, first of all, I want to say <laughs> that I thought I just, just something went wrong because when I always plan the episodes, I like write down what I want to talk about and blah, blah, blah. But I think I accidentally used some of the content for this episode for another episode. But not all of them. You just no, 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 not all of them. But like somehow I think... I mixed it because that episode was advice to international students. Yeah. Which I guess, you know... Maybe I forgot we overlap. wanted to do this episode. I honestly and forgot. And so then yeah. I was like... Um, because remember, we were walking outside and I said this one specific thing. And I was like, this would be great for something. But I didn't know which episode. And then we were doing the advice to oh. international students. And maybe then I was like, huh, I can use it here. Well, you'll get it again. Are you you'll saying it again? maybe a little bit okay. some of them i can't remember exactly what i said but i wrote down other stuff so let's get right into this do you want to start sure i realized okay just another another disclaimer i realized i don't have any travel hacks like when christina brought up this this in me i was like i travel a lot I'm for sure i know a lot wait let me ask you something oh. in the beginning do you think people in our age like generally have a lot of experience with traveling I think it really depends. I know a lot of people who travel a lot, but then I also know a lot of people who like have never flown by themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's the thing. There's this big gap, I think. I'm trying to think of people around me who've traveled like by themselves because I think that might be the the key factor. Yeah, the key yeah. factor because I think I'm in kind of a, this like bubble where people do travel a good amount, mm. but I, I'm realizing that not a lot of them like fly by themselves, like literally just by themselves, mm -hmm. even like with friends, because mm -hmm. for example, my two closest friends, like we've flown together, they flown with their parents, families, friends, but like not by themselves. I haven't themselves. flown with people in forever. Like when <laughs> I went too. to the, when I went to the work event, um, like some of them came to the airport with me because we were both flying all flying from the same terminal not at the same time my flight was the first and we just hung out there and even just like hanging out like just yeah. hanging out with people until you have to board your flight the luxury honestly i feel like i'm forgetting so much about how fun, fun it is to do stuff with people because like i've gotten so used to doing everything on my own even like the traveling and i'm completely fine with it like i have no problem with it it's just like then when i for example travel with someone i'm like ah oh, this is fun but what i did realize that wasn't with this trip but when i went to i think when i went to gran canaria with julia i realized i have my like routine of flying 
Yeah. Like, I mean, like, when I get to the airport, I do certain things in a certain order. And this is just how it works. I don't even think about it. Security, buy water, go to the bathroom, go read. You know, like, I have these things. And then when I'm with other people and they want to... What do you mean you want to go to the bathroom before you buy water? <laughs> it really throws you me off. You buy water every time you fly? Yeah. Why? You think I'm boarding an airplane without water? No, but... I always have my water bottle with me and then I fill it out uh, uh, after security. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a travel hack for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, because do you bring a water bottle? No, what? I don't travel what do you with mean? a water bottle. But you have so many at this point. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> They're just hanging out here. I never bring them to Switzerland. <laughs> okay, well, we well, could consider this a... a travel hack yeah if you're like me and you've never thought about thought of this go ahead because Just the water bring... is expensive yeah that's the thing i've never bought a water like wow. water at the airport and when i was flying from portugal i had my water bottle that's true i guess but not sometimes everywhere you can't fill it up i was gonna say oh. like i didn't see the water fountain there because yeah. usually they have them at airports like i've had great experience with that well in madrid you can take it from the top But in Madrid, they have at the airport, they have it everywhere. Oh, oh. So they're like specifically, but even like the Prague airport, like I've had a great experience like overall that there are like water fountains f specifically for filling out your bottles. Um, but in Portugal, I couldn't. Portugal? Like, I couldn't find it. Were you it. at the Lisbon airport? Mm, yes. Because I have a lot of issues with that airport. No. Wait, where did I fly from? We were in Porto, Lisbon. Is Lisbon down south? More down south than Porto. Christina doesn't know where she flew, where she boarded her flight, but that's okay. Because I think my mom and her friends flew from Lisbon, but they left me in at Lagos? another airport. And This then they, like, <laughs> went, they went with their car back to Lisbon. Okay. I think. But what okay. other air airport is there? Oh, Faro. Oh, I flew from how Faro. interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You were all the way down yeah, there. Yeah, because Lagos is here. And then we went to Faro and then they went back <gasps> to Lisbon. That's insane. You yeah. traveled like down the whole coast yeah. of Lisbon. Yeah. In a week. Yeah. While you were sick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So oh. there, there wasn't two go back to the point there wasn't the water fountain and i was pretty thirsty but, and so i was like well should i go buy water but it was like 250 for the small bottle yeah, for like three i was like i'm not decilitre. gonna pay that. that that's christina for you <laughs> and <laughs> you know what my mom is exactly the same it was so funny this weekend because you know my aunt was telling me stories from when they were in barcelona <laughs> <laughs> and like she said this like bathroom story where they needed to pee but they went to a place and it was like 150 and my mom was like i'm not gonna pay that <laughs> and so they found another bathroom for free but i mean honestly it's just our thing like i don't want to pay for something that seems like useless like if yeah, i want to go get a good water. dinner yeah we need water no I no it's it's agree. about the i always say this it's about the like principle of things i understand you know like of course i would love to have water but i'm not gonna pay 250 just because i'm at the airport and they want to make money you boarded the flight without water yeah. see that's insane to me but maybe that's just my trauma from being stuck on an airplane that never flew for six hours oh my god and the and they only didn't give thing, me water this much for the people <laughs> who can't see how much is this like one what is it one that's a yeah i don't know they gave us a big cup but they only filled <laughs> that much and i was on the airplane right they boarded the airplane we were on the airplane doors closed everything ready for takeoff but we never took off for six hours we were sat there they didn't give us any food they gave us that much water and I that mean, was it's it. the same thing with the freaking concerts Like, they should let you well, bring yeah. your own water. Yeah. Because this is insane. Like, we all know, I mean, if in case you haven't heard, it was in Brazil. Yeah, in, in Rio. Where apparently, like, one girl died when she was waiting for the concert. I mean, I saw some things that maybe she, maybe she had, like, some problems before. But even, uh, I don't care. Even if she did, even if she people didn't. People were still fainting. I always think about it, you know, like, this past summer when we went to the festival, mm. it was also really 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 hot 
and like they should let you or at least if they don't want you to bring some cocaine in the water i don't know why they don't allow it like they should let you enter with an empty water bottle and have a water fountain there so That's then what you they can did like at wembley it. at wembley stadium because in madrid with the harry styles concert there was also the same situation yeah. but at wembley the harry styles concert they let us enter with like the water bottle without the lid yeah and then there were water fountains everywhere and we yeah. could just fill it up for free because it's so dangerous and it's again just because they want to make money yeah. but like if i have but, my own water i will still buy a beer or i will still buy i might they even sell. buy something more expensive than water. exactly but i'm not gonna pay so much money for water like for me that's just a general thing even in restaurants i hate that but the other thing with the rio concert was they didn't turn on the like the vents like yeah. the air vents because they didn't want oh. people outside of the venue to be able to hear the concert it's insane which once again money and then people faint and die and you know what i mean like i mean even the thing is there's always going to be people who can't come to the concert also because the tickets are going to be sold out right what's so. the difference of them seeing or listening to they might not even be able to see it the concert has an event well whatever exactly this is exa like totally besides the point but just bring your water <laughs> bottle when you fly somewhere okay <laughs> and refill it after security mm-hmm If you can't do it, you can still buy water. You know what I mean? But yeah. this might save you water. Or don't, like Christina does. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, my first travel hack. And this is this might just be me. But when I travel, I and I don't have like checked in checked in luggage. Checked in luggage. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I take like my if and I have a suitcase I put everything that I need to like take out for security and put it into like my backpack that I'm bringing in addition to my suitcase or the bag that I'm bringing in addition to my suitcase I have that hack too I'm saying like a fanny pack like if you have yeah. a backpack you should still have like a little fanny pack and or put the liquids or like the electronics in there so then you can just go to security <laughs> my travel hack is to not take it out <laughs> <laughs> oh oh well let me one and then you can do version okay okay two. um then you can just put the backpack there real quick take everything out of your out of your backpack or bag and you don't have to stand there unzip your entire suitcase like how people still do that is insane to me they open up their suitcase they dig for wherever they have their electronics and they take it out no just put the suitcase on there take the couple like i can do this within seconds put it on the tray boom bye Now, you, well, before you say your version, I also read that apparently in Frankfurt, they already did this, but apparently in Madrid from 2024 on, you don't have to take anything out of your thing anything? for security. No, anything because they have new machines. Well, my uh, first of all, my hack was to have like a little fanny pack or yeah. a little purse, something. Always for your ID. And yeah, exactly. For your ID and phone, because like even if you have a backpack, like it's so annoying to take it down and like dig for stuff especially like if it's really full it's even hard to like mm. take out the stuff and so connected to that it's good thing that you said the electronics because for example my laptop get a backpack that has like the pocket specifically for your laptop because previously i had a backpack that was like kind of like it wasn't firm it was made out of like just uh like a fabric um that just collapses mm -hmm. <laughs> and so i even had like a little pocket in the big pocket for my laptop but it was still like difficult to take it out and especially put it back in when it was full so now i have a backpack that had well it's my sister's backpack <laughs> where it's like separate from everything and it's easy to slide it inside and take it out and with the liquids i haven't taken out anything for years at this point i don't do it it's crazy and it's me. fine it's fine like i've passed like with liquids i mean of course it's like within the limit they never take your suitcase out no no nothing and i've stopped doing that because i was like the worst thing that can happen is i'll do it after security they will tell me but not yeah to they'll have... take the suitcase out and like, yeah check and it. it's never like i don't want to jinx it but like i've been doing well And, and apparently the machines are changing anyway so yeah i think in prague they've already well i don't this was weird i think the first time i flew here or like the second time they had this new thing where you don't have to take out the electronics specifically mm. and then 
like it went back to having maybe they didn't work it. maybe they I don't did know. a trial run but, but i knew like they had some like improvements or like oh. new machines like you said and then they just went back to i don't know so electronics yes you take have to but not everything like power banks cables no just oh, no, the laptop no. or are your, you like, supposed Apple to take Watch. those out I don't think so. I don't know. No, maybe no, no. Some people do. Just I used like to do that actual... because I was, you know, the. Um... I used to do it, but then I realized I don't think you yeah. have to do it. Yeah. So that's it, and I guess my number one tip, I guess I think I already mentioned it in the advice to international students, but especially for us international students who go back and forth, travel with the least things possible. Now I've gone down to just a backpack and the fanny pack um because if you can leave things like where you study like if you don't have to travel with everything back and forth which i really hope for your own sake that you don't have to (laughs) um it's great to just travel with the least things possible because this time i only came with a backpack and i had such an easier time because like dragging around even when you go to the toilet and you have a backpack oh you have goodness. a carry-on that's you have the everything. worst part about traveling by yourself is when you need exactly. to take all your luggage into and the like stall. you can't fit it in the stall and it's but you're scared to leave it outside yeah. so it was just so so much easier so in general just try to travel with least things possible i can't relate to anything you just said i travel with a lot of stuff (laughs) you know you came with your backpack i came with my big silver suitcase that's crazy to me because you could leave your stuff here why did you do that you bought i thought you bought the carry-on specifically for that last semester or last year i don't know no yeah but i brought a lot of stuff home over the summer so i had to bring my big suitcase back and then I had to bring it back here because when I leave in December, I'm going to need it again to bring it Did you stuff bring back. it empty? The thing is, if I have it, I'm going to fill it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the no, problem. No, you know what I did? <laughs> I did what? another smart thing. Mm. I also brought a huge bag home to mm. take some, some stuff from here because we're going to be moving. Um, and it's, again, like it's this collapsible bag so oh that was genius i left it at home and when my sister came to visit me she literally she just folded it put it in her backpack and still came with a bunch of clothes Mm -hmm. in her backpack Mm -hmm. so she brought it for free because i was like i'm not gonna pay for a full bag if it's empty so i brought it here this way yeah i mean i didn't fill it with stuff that then i would have to take back in december but Mm -hmm. i brought brought like shampoo and stuff you know yeah Okay, another one is, and I li- and I live by this, okay? Pack the night before. Don't let people stress you out when the trip approaches and they're like, have you packed yet? And it's three days before and you haven't even thought about packing. There is no reason why you should pack earlier than the night before. If you pack earlier than the night before, half the things you won't be able to pack yet because you'll still need yeah. them. Because you'll still need them for like the three days still remaining of your life in that other place. There is no reason. Pack the night before. Don't stress yourself out. Put everything in there. Then write a list of everything that you need to pack in the morning. In the morning, wake up. Look at that list. Pack the remaining things. Done. Done. Yeah. Also, packing only takes up as much time as you give it to. As you give to it. You know what I mean? I'm not formulating that well. So I'm not saying like do it at midnight, but I'm saying like if you do it the night before, start at nine, you'll have it done by 10. If you start three days before, it'll take three days of you always having to think about it, always kind of adding another thing here and there. And even the stress factor of like having to pack because you're leaving tomorrow just forces you to do it. And it's fine. My mom's friend, let's say, he always packs like the very last minute like if he's flying 11 in the morning he's gonna pack at night oh that i don't do yeah i packed the night before oh just trying to read her own mind i mean this one is kind of like general it says book flights early but i would say not too early Mm -hmm. because there are airlines especially the what are they called uh the cheap ones but the cheap ones but in check we like call it i don't know whatever they tend to play with the prices a lot so my advice would be to like start checking it early enough to see where the price kind of like from where to where it ranges Mm -hmm. 
um because also i don't know enough about this but i always know that there are like some cheapest days when to book the flight yeah. and all that so just so you have enough time to like kind of figure this out and see i mean if you want to save money on flights like if you have money and you just want to buy it go ahead but for us students <laughs> um they play around with the prices so just so you know like where approximately the price is and then um, you can like check it multiple times and then if it like goes down you just buy it and yeah so not last minute but like it's not necessary to book it a year yeah ahead or something i mean unless you're going somewhere far away like if it's these short flights where they fly every day or every multiple two times days, exactly like if you're going to new york you should probably plan it a little bit better i mean if you're from europe if you're in the u.s Olivia, that could like, be a different different story again yeah yeah i mean that's a whole like booking flights is not my favorite thing to no. do it's always stressful like i always think about should i buy it now should i wait if it gets cheaper i think this was actually the first time where i did well where i yeah, did you exactly really got what it I perfectly yeah and it's never been cheaper from well also then. christina travels with ryanair mm -hmm. which i don't because they don't fly to switzerland And I feel like they're the worst of the worst. Yeah. Because EasyJet, like, they're not great, but they don't do what Ryanair does with, like, the intense fluctuating prices from one day to another. It's literally every day. Yeah. And oftentimes even multiple yeah. times a day. Like, I check, and then two hours later, it's a different price. Yeah. And then... And maybe one more thing to that is when you're looking for the flight, either change your VPN or do say. the private browsing whatever just so they don't really the know incognito. that you're looking for it and also like with again with Ryanair specifically like what I do is I click on a different date than I want to actually fly and then there are these arrows like on the left and right and you can kind of like slide and still not click on the specific date again so they can't know when I want to fly mm -hmm. because then again it's technically a myth because we don't have a proof but like they tend to make the flights more expensive like the more you if search you check for them. the 20th 10 times they're gonna know you want to fly in the 20th yeah exactly so yeah just do like incognito vpn oh vpn is not only good because of that i feel like sometimes it really just varies depending on countries yeah. the same flight will have like a different price mm -hmm. so if you do have that amazing otherwise maybe get like a friend who's in another country mm -hmm. to check the flight too exactly. just to make sure because sometimes it makes a huge it difference. did happen to us like when my friend was looking for a flight from madrid to prague and it showed her a different price than when i was checking from here from madrid mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she was in prague i don't know if i specified it yeah so yeah yeah so the next one is i mean this is very basic this is where my my where i kind of ran out of things but to like roll your clothes mm -hmm. and then what i usually do with like jeans and stuff i'll roll them and pack them because i feel like you can fit more things And with, like, small items like underwear or socks, I'll put them in. Like, I know people have, like, fancy, well, what do you call them? Vacuum? Packing cubes. No? no, no, but the bags that, like, you put the stuff in there and then you vacuum the air out and then they're, like, it gets really small. Um, vacuum, yeah. Vacuum bags, right? Something. People have those fancy ones. I don't have those fancy ones, but obviously. Those but those... Huh? it's like i always say it's not the problem of not fitting enough stuff in the luggage it's the weight because oh, with me it's also the for me it's not it's always just like the weight because i could fit oh. so many more things in there oh. but it's just the weight is the problem and that but what i do because i don't have that and i don't have the energy <laughs> for that um with like small items like socks because i feel like they can take up a lot of space even though it's literally nothing i just put them in little plastic bags and then i literally do the same thing that you would do with with the vacuum cleaner manually where i just push all the air out and then take a little like hair tie or something and like close it like that and then it takes up no space at all and then i just pop that somewhere in there and that has i feel like socks and underwear is better to not pack like together because with this i feel like you can stuff these like little holes that still have a tiny little bit of space you know it still takes up so much space i don't know well try out both i mean honestly with packing <laughs> try try it many all. different styles because some people say you could you should like roll it up some people say you should put it in the packing cubes but with me mostly the best thing that works is just to stuff it in there oh that's crazy 
I mean, I, I fold it, but then like once it's in, I need to like adjust things and like just stuff it in there as much as I can. And then, like I said, I put like underwear and socks in the like tiny holes yeah. that are still left. Also, I feel like it depends on whether you're traveling with a backpack or with a suitcase, you know? Yeah. Like some, some like suitcases, I feel like you can fill them out very perfectly because they just, they're just squared, you know? So you can really just, whereas with, with backpacks, like you have a great one that you yeah. can open from the top, but if you have just like one, you can only open from like one place. That's kind of where the stuffing comes yeah into play. I think I mentioned in the episode about the advice that you should always like leave some stuff at home. And here I would say do it specifically buy a bunch of socks and underwear buy a lot of them so you have them at home but also at the place where you're studying if you're keeping your things there because i kept my things here like two years two years like throughout the summers as well because like you said like it's an unnecessary thing that does take up like a lot of space if you're taking a lot of it like Mm. when i was taking stuff like home and here i was like i need a lot because i'm going home over the summer like i need as much as i can but it's such an unnecessary thing like it's not expect expensive to get more and you'll always use them yeah like all of them yeah so just try to like take it out of the packing equation completely if it's possible yeah that's true that's a good one yeah and then always bring a first day first aid kit always have like a small Mm. thing because i always had it like at home where i have all my medicine and stuff and here but then when i was traveling throughout the summer i would never think of that insane i bring it i bring all of the medicine (laughs) anything that could possibly go wrong i will have it i mean you can just have the basic ones like painkillers or like a cold medicine because i mean if it's something worse like you would probably need to go to the doctor or hospital anyways but like when we went to Band-Aids. Rome and all of us got a cold we had nothing That's and crazy. it's like expensive in other countries i mean there were people and nobody brought anything? it was the first time i think we went by ourselves ah. so i think that's why we just didn't you think of it and, and in, exactly in this way we learned but always have some because i mean i think even the first day before we got sick i got an insane migraine mm. when i wanted to throw up and luckily there were people around us even i think czech people that we asked them for the painkillers and they saved me but it's a really really important thing to have bring Trust the me. ones that work against nausea those are important too if you get sick on a boat if you get sick on an airplane mm. like travel sickness in general also if you eat something bad which can happen a lot yeah. like when you travel um that's helpful too and it doesn't have to be like this giant bag with stuff it's just oh i just bring like two of everything yeah like two yeah. head like ibuprofen yeah that kind of stuff so my other thing is i mean connected to the booking flights thingy um if you're looking for flights i mean this is very this might be very like Switzerland mm-hmm. thingy, but look for flights in other countries too. But again, this is very Switzerland because the thing is, it takes me the same amount of time to go to Milan to the airport as it mm. does to Basel. So maybe this isn't helpful to a lot of people. But if you live in Central Europe and you're mm-hmm. surrounded by a lot of other countries, check those flights too. If you realize, oh, the, my closest airport or like the airport in my country is very expensive it might make a huge difference. Like, I always check Milan to, to see the flights, especially with, like, long-distance flights. I feel like sometimes it makes a huge difference. That's yeah, I did one. it, too. Like, I have an airplane. Not an airplane. She has a private check, guys. <laughs> Everything she's been saying. <laughs> um, I have a, an airport super, super close to my dad's house, so we usually fly from there. But sometimes if it's an expensive flight or more long distance flight, we go to Vienna because that you can easily go by train there. The only issue is like if the flight is in the morning, then like the direct trains don't go throughout the night. I think there's some buses, some like there's options. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a good, especially if you're a student, like it's pretty cheap to take the train ride and then it's less expensive to fly from there. So we've done it too many times. My mom as well. So Yeah. It's approved. <laughs> I just realized all these travel tips are very like airplane focused. But I mean, you do connect traveling mostly. No? I mean, some I people probably so. travel a lot by car, but... I don't really like... Because I was just thinking like, what do I have to share about 
trains, but I mean, that's very... Trains? Because I've done, like, interrail and stuff, but... With trains, I would say book that ahead. I was gonna Because say. I think there, the price doesn't change. It usually, if it changes, it goes up or it gets, like, completely full. Especially if you want to do, like, interrail during the summer. There's a lot of countries where it's mandatory to book, like, especially the long-distance trains. And they will just there will be no space for you anymore. You know what I mean? You yeah. won't be able to get to where you want to get. Or what happened to me last year is I had to do... Oh, this is actually a fun... This is another time. Mm-hmm. With Interrail. I mean, maybe this is only Switzerland, but I don't think so because Interrail is in Europe. Um, I've noticed that the difference for the Interrail ticket between first class and second class was like 20 francs, mm-hmm. which is like 20 euros too. So if like you really need to get somewhere which for me i really needed to get somewhere on a specific day because i was traveling down there for work um and you and one train is like second class is all booked out ask them about first class and depending on the country like in italy even making the reservation is not a huge difference in between like i think reservation for second class is 10 and the reservation for first class is 15 or something like that and then the general pass change is also only 20 euros so like if you really want to get somewhere at a specific point like with interrail it doesn't make a huge difference with the general tickets i think it does at least in switzerland mm-hmm. but with interrail that might be a good option okay i really want to do interrail interrail one day you never but have no. no because my friend has and he's really traveled a lot throughout europe it's pretty cool but the reservations are a bit that's the thing, because I would want it to be, like, very Flexible. spontaneous. Yeah. But at this point, I think it's so popular that it might be a bit... But the thing difficult. is, like, the only ones that you have to make reservations for in most countries are, like, the long-distance one, mm-hmm. Like, the fast ones. So, if you take... You can always choose, like, the short-distance option, which will take you a little bit longer. But, I mean, it's part of the journey. Like, yeah. with Interrail, you travel to travel, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And with those, you can usually be spontaneous. So, yeah, oh. just to add some trains in there. Oh, this one is also Ryan Air specific. And it's if you want a window seat, or at least you don't want the middle seat, do the check-in the latest possible. Because they mm. always give out, like, if you don't buy the specific seat and you get it randomly assigned, they give out first, obviously, the worst seats. So, like, the middle seats... And then I think they give out the aisle seats and then the window seats. And I've always had a window seat because I love window seats. I know some people don't because then no, if no, you go to the, the bathroom. Who cares? I don't. I don't. I, Especially I mean, on long, short distance. Exactly. Exactly. So if you want to do that, like it's been working extremely well for us. That's Just do the smart. check-in the latest possible. But don't forget about the check-in because my sister, she was flying to Italy and they were stressed out about everything because... You know, they bugged the return flights mm-hmm. like a month later, accidentally, mm. like they didn't notice or something. And I mean, it, it was a whole thing. I think they were flying by themselves for the first time too. Maybe for the second time. I don't remember. So it was a whole mess. And I think she wanted to do the check-in like as late as possible because I told her. And then they had a whole mess. They forgot. And she wanted to do it on her way to the airport. But it was, but it was too late. Because you can yeah. do it like two hours. Yeah. Until two hours before the flight. But luckily, she was lucky. And like the person at the airport didn't force her to pay to do the check-in. Okay. So she was lucky. That's a fear of mine. Because I do it very last minute. I don't know why. I just don't understand the like reasoning of doing it earlier. Also, if something goes wrong, I feel like it's better to not already be checked in. Like, in terms of financial repercussions and stuff like I that. I guess so. So, I always, like, I pack the night before. Right before I go to sleep, I do the check-in. So, I am terrified of forgetting it yeah. one of these days. But that's a good one. That's true. I guess my last one would be, if it's possible, don't fly late at night. Like, again, short flights. This is completely different for long flights because with the long flight, you could fly in the evening and arrive in the morning. Mm. But I mean it specifically because like for me, when I travel alone to Madrid, 
I it's hard to get home from she the airport. She always does at it night. <laughs> She's I, saying this, but you. Literally... I know that's why this is a travel hack because I'm like, don't do it. It always destroys me. Like I always manage to get home through some like night buses, but it's a nightmare, and I'm so tired, exhausted. Like I feel like now I'm better just because I've gotten used to the traveling, and like I think again, not to jinx it, I don't have like the week long dark just basically the dark week after i arrived mm. um but before like it made everything worse i would arrive at like three or four in the morning and be super tired in the morning especially i think one time i did it and the next day i had to go to school oh, directly insanity. <laughs> so like if it's possible do it throughout the day so you can still manage to arrive normally especially if you're going coming here or like to the city where you study um there was a hair here after like a longer period of time you won't have food here so it's good to still have some time of the day when you arrive to go get some food very true or just don't have class the next morning then I you forgot can go about my most important travel hack the food the food oh my goodness so my newly new thing is if i'm traveling from here from madrid to somewhere and then coming back here to madrid Mm -hmm. you know it's not like i'm going home for three Mm -hmm. months i started leaving some food Mm. here that won't go bad because before i always used to be like i have to eat everything like empty everything out so nothing goes bad but then i would always arrive and i would have nothing here not even the basics not even like cereal with milk for breakfast or something And so I started doing that. I always leave a little bit of food here so I can get through the first couple of days after I arrive, at least like the evening and morning, but maybe even like two more days because you never know when you'll have time to go grocery shopping. And it's changed my life, truly. No, that's true. Because it's like one less thing you need to stress about. And I think I will apply this um, once I actually like live somewhere yeah like work whatever and then travel because like my mom the thing is my mom always used to do this like whenever she would go on vacation she would empty out the fridge everything nothing would be at home when we would come and then it's so stressful because like you don't have any food and maybe you don't have time to go buy something so leave something that doesn't go bad or something you can always make from scratch or like you know it's great i really 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 recommend this no, that's a good one. Three, two, one. Book, book club. club. Okay. So I'm still reading all of the same books I've been reading before, but I started reading the one book for class. Which, Which is um, Snow on the Atlantic, How Cocaine Came to Europe. Okay. What? <laughs> I know it's an interesting topic. I mean, all of the books that we had, like an option. They were, a lot of them sounded very interesting. I chose this one based on the topic sounds interesting. Um, also, the amount of pages was That very was my important. number one criteria. <laughs> <laughs> that was very important to me could I find the book was very important to me so and I've been reading that I'm not that far along I have to write a book commentary about it for my investigative reporting class but so far I'm really enjoying it like I I kind of I don't know I don't read books like this very often about like non-fiction books because I think they kind of scare me like I'm scared Mm -hmm. that they'll be written in a very like abstract and theoretical way but this one is super interesting super like flows very easily um like i haven't even re- read like for a long time i haven't been reading for a long time but i already read like a good amount of pages in a little time because it just flows very easily it's super interesting like he tells the whole story like using little like anecdotes not just like ba- not just like theoretical dates and locations and mm-hmm. stuff like that so i've been enjoying that i've also been reading a book for that class <laughs> It's called Betrayal, the Crisis of the Catholic Church. Oh. You might know it because of the Boston Globe Boston Globe Spotlight documentary. Well, no. Film. It's a it's a film, but it was m- like made based on the events and everything. And it's also really interesting. It's just very 
like detailed in the sense where they include a lot a lot a lot of like victims and their statements and also because there were so many priests that were abusers Mm -hmm. so like there's so many names and dates you know they always say he served in this church from this year to this year where there was this reverend overseeing this like so many of these things and i think it's just the more they i think they put it there because it makes it so much more mm, serious yeah it makes more of an impression on you and you know what literally last night it made me cry like because the whole thing is horrible but then i read that like a story about of one victim Mm -hmm. and their experience and then because they didn't remove the priest or i think Mm, that like because they were like circulating them whenever there was like a troubled priest they just put him in a different church Mm. and so because they circulated them like his son went through the exact same thing and i just cried because it's like it's insane to me like you would think that it's such like a rare thing for it to happen and then it happened the exact same in the same church with his son i think it was a different priest yeah at that time but it's just it for the father it must be heartbreaking because it's such an insane thing to have to go through and horrible thing and then when you think about like your child going through it as well it just i was like this is not like this is not possible no no that whole story it's it's horrible so and the weird things i like before we watched the documentary i think last year or the Mm. year before i haven't heard about it i'd heard a little bit about it but like from switzerland you know like yeah on a like smaller or you think it was on like you hear the occasional case and you think oh this is like small scale no honestly that was the first time i realized like how prevalent it was yeah now after reading the book it almost sounds like the what is it called like the whole world of this religion it sounds like some like mafia organization like the way they are like handling things like there's someone i didn't even know that's how it works when there's i mean i knew there's bishops and there's the the what's the one yeah the pope and everything but i didn't know that like they have this whole like system of things where they put priests in certain churches it's its and like, own little world with rules yeah. and laws and, and yeah. that you get like promoted to like the next you're climbing the ladder like i didn't know like yeah. it's crazy to me insane insane yeah so i'm reading that and i haven't read more of my book that i was reading man and a boy which I really want to read that book because it's really good. But I just, I have to finish this because I need to write the assignment. Well, what about the f- book you wrote for a feature? Yeah, 10 Days in a Madhouse. I oh. also read that. But yeah, it's pretty short. I wrote the book commentary for another class. So Interesting. these are the books. I feel like this is very out of like <laughs> our usual like, canon. <laughs> Usually we're like, well, I just started reading this rom-com. <laughs> But yeah, honestly, these investigative books are really interesting. interesting. I would read all of them. It's I was just, gonna say I went through the list. I was like, if if yeah. I didn't have like limited time or anything, exactly. I would... Like I don't care about how long the book is. It's just that I need to re- read and write the assignment as soon as possible now. So that's why I was trying to choose. But I was the thinking we one. need to like exchange all of them afterwards. Like yeah. I want to read Laura's. I want to read yeah. Sophia's. Like we oh, need did to... you buy a physical copy of your book for the one? Yeah, the other one. I wanted to, but then I was like. I'm probably not going to read it again, so... Yeah, I just wanted it to take notes, but the other one, I couldn't find it anywhere, like, in the bookstores here, and then Amazon, it would have taken forever. Yeah. So I just bought the PDF. Yeah. And now for the song of the week. What is your song? I don't know. My song of the week is boring. I've just kind of been, like, listening to songs that I've been listening to for ages. Mm-hmm. But I would say, maybe right now, I really like Paul Revere by Noah Kahan. Because when the album came out, I kind of ignored that. What? I also <laughs> have his, no, no, no. But oh. I have a song from him. When that album came out, I kind of ignored that song. I don't mm-hmm. know why. I liked it, but it didn't like yeah. impact me. And then we were listening to it in the cabin. And we had this whole situation where we thought Sophia was singing along to it when she's never heard the song in her life. And I looked over and I saw that song and I was like, huh, this is very nice. So I started listening to it more and I started appreciating it. More. How long have you been listening to Noah Kahan? 
like years, years like when his first okay. album came out okay which i don't know because i've was. just like recently well i think because he went very viral on tiktok with his newest album i think i got to know him because of you not because of tiktok oh. because probably at that time i didn't have a tiktok Oh, that's <laughs> those were the days. But I also have his song, and it's called "Young Blood." Ugh. I don't know from which album it is. Is it the newest? No, no it's an older one. Um, but I just somehow discovered it. I think because we were listening yeah. to him a lot lately, and I discovered it, and I've been playing that song every day. You've been singing it. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. It's great. So go listen to it. And that's it. That's it. Thanks for listening. As always, <laughs> give us a review, please. You can always answer the question that somebody we answered put up the question Spotify. on their last episode. <gasps> it was a poll, but somebody. Oh, thank true. you, whoever you are. Was it you? I don't think so. Oh, because you were like, <laughs> thank um, you. Shout out. Yes, and we'll see you next week. Bye, bye. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to get in touch, you can find all of our information in the description below. <laughs>